Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode. Um, today I thought I'd take a look at how we can use VBA to get the paths to certain uh, common folders, um, what some people refer to as special folders and other environment folders that can be useful when we need to save files or find files to process or upload, whatever the case may be here. So um, I thought I'd show you, because the, there is a variety of different approaches, so I thought I'd just show you a couple different approaches. And obviously, as usual, you pick the best one to suit your needs. So let's dive into special folders using VBA. So per the usual, I have a sample database. If I open it up, you'll see all I have in it currently is VBA modules. So I'll enable my content. And as you can see here, I've broken it down quite simply. Two different API approaches. We're going to look at the using environ, how we can do it with PowerShell, just plain shell, and W script. So as I say, there's a multitude of ways of going about this. Each presents their own advantages or inconvenience, and some access more than others. So you're going to have to know what you're looking for to decide which approach is best for you. Let's just take a look start off with the simplest of all, which is just using the environment function. And as you can see here, it really comes down to just a single line. I put it in a reusable function, but it's just one line where we're just using the environment function and we have to supply it the folder we're after. So you can use any folder name that is in the environment uh, environment. So you can find that out even if you don't know yourself you can come in and you can launch the command prompt. And if you were to do set, these are all the different variables and some of which are folders, not all, however, all of the different variables that you can access using that function. So you could do, I want the app data. I want the uh, OneDrive folder, etc. You can also get other information which aren't folder related. You could use it to get the computer name if you wanted, the number of processors, things like that. I'm concentrating today on folders. So as you can see, program data, program files. Uh, you can go after the system root, the temp folder, uh, the user profile. This is used a lot because if you get the user profile, you can tack on to, after that, desktop, download, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very commonly used one because you can use it to identify a whole slew of other um, subfolders, basically. Um, so this is where you're able to determine which variable you use in this function. So I can then come and we can simply call it with a single line. And inside, we just have to give it one of those variable names. So if I wanted the Windows directory for some reason, I just put windeer and there it would be. I wanna get that user profile, like I said, and there I have it. And let's say I wanted, okay, I want the desktop. Well, I know that we'd add desktop and now I have the desktop folder because it's just a concatenation where we tap it on or I want the downloads. There you go. Um, so as you can see, it, it's simple, it's easy to use, but it is restricted that you only have access to the folders that are defined through the command prompt in the set, in the environment variables. So not all the folders are there, but the common ones are, however. The one drawback here, as with when I talked previously about getting a username or the computer name or things like that, this can be spoofed, it can be hacked. I'm not going to go into how, that isn't the purpose of this video, but just know that if we're really going to be stringent about security, if we're worried about malicious users, things like that, this probably isn't the best approach and we should be looking at one of the other approaches. That said, let's be serious here. We're talking about retrieving a folder. Uh, is, is this going to be a huge deal if we just use this function? Probably not. You know, I'm just looking to get the folder where I can access a file or create a uh, the uh, the initial folder to open a file dialog things like that this is more than fine let's move on to our next option so let's let's look at w script and you'll see here in the function that i created 
it's not very complicated. We're using a WScript shell, and then we're using its special folders. Now, what are the available special folders? Well, in the function header, I include them here. The values that can be used are right here. So uh, all users desktop start menu program startup, and then the current users desktop favorite fonts, my documents, nethood, printhood, programs, recent sent to startup menu, startup, and the templates folders. And knowing that, as I show here, it's as simple as doing this to get the desktop folder. If we want the My Documents folder, no big deal. We just do that. I want to get the uh, All Users desktop for some reason. There it is. So as you can see, it's very easy to use, but we are limited to only these folders. This is why I say you have to evaluate which of the functions has the folders that you're going to be looking for or which one's the most versatile that accesses the most folders. And we're going to keep looking. You'll see some offer more access to folders than others. But this is another very simple and convenient function. Easy to use, single line, no APIs. There's no issues with bitness, none of that stuff. So it's easy and effective. Next. Next, we can go over to using the shell command. And in this one, to simplify its usage, I created an enum. And as you can see here, it's a single line once again, where we're going to use a shell application namespace. And here we're supplying the folder. And that is where that enum comes in. Instead of having to memorize these values for different folders, I wanted something in plain English. So I created an enum that's associated to these values. And now we can simply call it with, once again, a single line, single command. And now my enum kicks in where I can just pick plain English. I want to go get the desktop. And there it is. Um, and just as easily, I want to go get whatever. What are the case may be? Uh, where are the program files? There it is. And we can come here and go down. Let's see what we have at the other end of things. Where are the startup items? There you go. As you can see, just based on the enums here, the shell offers you access to many more folders than just the few that are here in the W script. So this one's perhaps a little bit more convenient, more versatile, depending on your needs, obviously. But as you can see, very straightforward, very easy. The bulk of this code is actually an enum just to simplify its use. Moving on, we can also do this in PowerShell. And I have a page on this on my uh, blog. Um, and there's two things here uh, that have to be used uh, depending on what you're going after. PowerShell can go get environment variables. So like we saw with the environ. Um, but we can also go get system variables. So there's two distinct functions here depending on what you're going after. But PowerShell offers you the ability to access both. And then below here is just my generic PowerShell get output. So this is the guy that runs the command and returns the result. So this is the one that processes the actual command and returns the variable to us. So in both cases, it's always the same thing. I build up a command. And then I pass it to my function, which returns the PowerShell output. And it's the same thing here. We build up a command, and then my function uh, runs the command and returns it. So as you can see here, I've got a couple examples. Um, if we want to find out the path to the temporary folder, we just run this command here. And then we'd get the path to the temporary folder. Um, and you can do the same for any of the variables that we saw previously under the environment. They're all accessible, obviously. Plus, because we have the second function, we can also go and get other information that are accessible through system variables. And we'll get the My Documents folder. We can go get the same thing like I showed previously through the shell. We can go get the startup. 
So we can go get a whole slew of different folders. And I cover in the article that covers this for PowerShell, I enumerate all the available variables. So you can look at the article if you want to know what other options are available to you. But basically, you have access between these two functions to pretty much everything you could possibly need. One thing you may have noticed, however, is comparatively to other approaches, PowerShell is slightly slower because we are shelling this out or, um, to an external application. So there's an overhead here, which causes a delay. But it works beautifully. Lastly, we have two API approaches. And why two? Well, I started off using this guy here. Um, so the sh get folder, I include a link here. And it works beautifully. But if you read the documentation, they specifically say that this is an older approach and we should actually be using the newer approach, which we'll look at next. But I put in the comments here, older but much easier. So that already gives you an indication that the newer approach, yes, it may be newer and perhaps Microsoft and perhaps Microsoft views it as better, but it is much more complicated. So let's start off with this one here. Um, as you can see here, we're going to define a string. We're going to call the API. We're going to use the S path. So the API is going to populate the S path with a value if it finds it. And then if the return value is that everything went smoothly, then we're going to trim it off and get the, the value returned by the API. Um, in here, once again, to simplify its usage, I'm using the same enum. I put it here. I'm using the enum CSIDL, the same one from the mod shell. So if we come back here, I'm reusing this because they're the same one. So we have access to the same information, except we're using an API. And I do that just to simplify data entry, simplify usage. But if we come here, you'll see it's the same ones. And we can go and check any which ones you want. And there we go. Um, and we can do whatever folder you want. Um, fonts. There's my font folder. So as you can see, very simple to use. Um, now we obviously have to think about bitness here. Right now I'm on a 32-bit environment, so I've used a 32-bit declaration. So this would need to be upgraded if we're going to use it in 64-bit. Not a big deal, but once again, something to keep in mind. So the API, as you saw, is very fast, very effective, but you do have that extra headache of dealing with bitness. So up to you. The second API, so the newer API, is uh, here and as you can see it's the recommended approach now but it's more complicated i say that i didn't invent this uh the the bulk of the code shall we say i've taken it from this website i've just slightly modified it i created an enum because once again i want to simplify usage so i created a full enum i'm going to look at the functions in a second and then I created a helper function that cross-references the enum with the uh, GUID string. So these two things, that's what I did to the code that I took from that website. So the rest of it comes from that website. So I did not invent any of this. And as you can see, he's got some functions, declarations. And then this is the actual function that does the work for us. And he had a second helper function here that is also required. If you come here and you take a look at it, I'm using the enum, like I said, to simplify the entry, its usage. And then I use my helper function immediately to take that value and convert it to the GUID string. After that, we're into the function just as it was originally written. And he calls a couple APIs and that returns a pointer that he then converts and he gets out of that the folder path. So let's try it out. If we use the get folder, we come here, the enum appears. You can come and pick whatever you're going after. But as you can see, we get 
the path. Um, we can come here and use any which one we want. Fonts, and there it is. So it's, it's up to you. Once again, we're talking APIs. I've currently coded it for 32 bit, so this needs to be adapted if you want to use in 64 bit. But as you can see, they work. They're very easy to work with. And with the enum, they're intuitive. There's nothing to know. You don't need to remember GUIDs. You don't need to remember hex values and things like that. You just pull, you just pull from the enum and it takes care of the rest. Um, as you can see here, this enum is quite extensive. So this is the APIs probably offer the greatest access to the greatest amount of folders. But do you truly need this? Depending on your need, obviously, you pick and choose. But uh, the enum here, I forget, it's like 86 different uh, folders that are accessible, I believe. Something along those lines. And like I said, I do include here uh, links to uh, where I got some of this information. Um, and in this particular case, where I actually got the original code from, because this is not my original code. So uh, as always, it's <laughs> nice when fellow developers share some of the knowledge and I didn't have to reinvent everything. I just adapted it to, find, uh, to develop something that I consider to be more user-friendly for developers. And we'll leave it at that for today. So basically at the end of the day, as we just saw a quick overview, uh, there are multiple ways of getting special folders, system folders, system variable folders um, using VBA. I showed you six. There are even more, um, but these are probably what I guess I'd qualify as the most common approaches. Um, and which one you use is really up to you. You know, the KISS approach is always the wisest in anything you do, and especially when it comes to programming. Uh, so keep it simple. And uh, that applies here too. So realistically, uh, using you know sh the shell, the W script, the environ are probably your three best options. They're quick, efficient. Um, so why not stick with that? But if you need extra power, you need access to folders that aren't accessible through those means, well then start turning towards things like the uh, APIs or even PowerShell. Um, but the choice is yours. Hope this covers the subject somewhat and has enlightened you all as to a variety of different approaches available to you in your projects and solutions. Hope it was informative and helps you out a little bit. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe. Be greatly appreciated and help me to continue to make more videos on more subjects. Have a great day, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.